the uh, other question I had is about healing. How do we, um, I mean, I really resonated with the previous questioner and her experiences and your, uh, Esther's experiences, but how do you affect, a, you know, if something's wrong and you want to heal yourself? I, I remember listening to uh, one of your CDs where you're saying that you can change your vibration and heal any, any disease. Well, you can. The trick to healing is... <coughs> So here you are, and here's where you want to be. Now, think about the different thoughts that you could think about a particular diagnosis or physical condition. So if you're focusing on where you are, are you looking toward how you want to be, or are you looking at where you are? And so the word healing sort of distracts you or misguides you because when you think about healing, you're thinking about the disease that you want to heal. And so the word healing almost always calls your attention to the problem, which is looking in the wrong direction. So that's what goes pain. wrong with the idea of healing. So when, when you think in terms of rather than healing what's wrong, instead allowing what's right, that's why we like to talk in terms of you are physical extensions of source energy. And you want to think about allowing the wellness rather than getting rid of the illness. So if healing means allowing, then you're on the right side of the, of the equation. If healing means getting rid of what's broken, now you're on the wrong side. And the word in and of itself doesn't matter, but the way you feel about it does. So many people are thinking about getting rid of this thing I do not want. Well, that never works. You've got to allow what you do want. And that's the thing that's a little troubling when something is manifested. Now you've got something you're noticing, a sensation or a pain or a bump or, 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 or a diagnosis or an x-ray. There's something that is tangible that then feels real. And that's the thing that we really want to shake up within all of you today. We want you to stop letting reality count for so much because reality doesn't mean diddly squat. Reality, all, all reality is is the measurement you've taken of the vibration that you've been offering. But as you heard us say emphatically already here today, you can't get stuck. And when you speak of reality, often the word reality sounds like it's static. It sounds like it's finished. It sounds like it's where I'm, it, that I'm stuck here. And all it is is energy in motion. That would be like saying, I am a traveler on my way to San Diego, but I'm in Yuma. My reality is Yuma. <laughs> my reality is Yuma. And we say, no, your rea reality is not Yuma, and your reality won't even be San Diego because you are always in motion. It always unfolds. So if you think in terms of I am always moving toward my newest idea of that which I now prefer from where I now stand, and realize that your physical body will follow the train of your thoughts, then you just have to ask yourself, are the train of my thoughts looking toward wellness or are the train of my thoughts looking toward illness? It is interesting the number of people that feel horrified if they don't have insurance coverage or health coverage yeah. because they have been convinced that decline and illness are a certain, are certainty. And they must be prepared for that inevitability. And, and we want to say to you, what is inevitable is well-being. And sometimes you have to stand back a little bit to realize the enormous inevitability of well-being. In other words, from our vantage point, well-being is. And the degree to which you pinch yourself off from it is your deal, but it doesn't have anything to do with the reality of the well-being that's being offered to you. So we're wanting to give you a different stance on on healing. We wouldn't use the word healing. We would not say, I am a healer. We would say, I am an acknowledger of natural wellness. I'm an acknowledger of natural well-being. So you should sort of uh, do it as a preventative, I mean, you should try to get into to this uh, vibration. Well, preventative is like, preventative is pushing against what you don't want. And so in, in, a, in the same way that there's allowing and there's resisting, there's wellness and there's preventing, in other words, and so we would be pointed toward allowing the natural well-being. 
allowing the natural well-being. But you're right in the sense that it is preventative in that you're paying attention one thought at a time. So you're just allowing the well-being to squirt out in this way and squirt out in this way and squirt out in this way. In other words, I used to be really mad at this person and I used them as my excuse to disallow the well-being. But then I realized I didn't like that feeling of being angry, so I reached for a feeling of, of less anger until I was a- able to actually appreciate that person or I stopped thinking about that person altogether. But I'm no longer using that person as my source or my excuse to disallow my wellness. And we want to say to you that if you stay in mild aggravation all of your life, in other words, let's say, let's say that you're just, you're just mildly aggravated and mildly overwhelmed and frustrated, mm-hmm. you could remain in that vibration and your physical body would probably do just fine. It's the stronger issues of unworthiness and, and feelings of uh, true hatred or feelings of fear or feelings of depression. Those are the stronger, longer vibrations that hold you further apart from the well-being. Because the, the vibration of well-being is so strong, it can survive a lot of resistance. But over time, you sort of acclimate to the disallowance of the well-being. And in doing so, you experience the absence of it. The thing that we want most for you to accept is that there is wellness and then there is not allowing the wellness, but there is not illness. And that's hard when you're looking at physical manifestation and you say, well, I can see the full embodiment of illness. And we say, don't look at it that way. Don't look at that as the full embodiment of illness. Look at it as a pinching off of wellness. And when you start looking at it in that way, and more importantly, you start feeling yourself. So you're standing in the middle of something, some subject that doesn't have anything to do with your physical wellness. You're not talking about your body. You're not talking about some diagnosis. It's totally off the subject. You're talking about money or you're talking about your love life or a relationship or something. So there you are, and here's where you want to be relative to that subject. But for whatever reason, maybe because of who you're talking to, maybe because of the intensity of the subject, you find yourself deliberately beating the drum that's taking you on this side rather than on this side. And the negative emotion that ensues is your indicator. Not only are you disallowing this subject from moving closer to what you want, but you are, in general, disallowing the energy of well-being. In other words, when you beat the drum of something unwanted, it does not only affect that subject that you are focused upon, it affects your ability to allow well-being on all subjects. You are you are more integrated subject-wise than you know. And haven't you noticed that when you're in a bad mood, you're sort of in a bad mood about everything? Yeah. And when you're in a good mood, you're sort of in a good mood about everything. In other words, things blur and bleed together much more than most people realize. And so that's why when you are newly in love, everything starts turning up because you're focused upon something that allows the energy to begin flowing again and everything improves. There are so many people that go from sick to well because they have fallen in love. There are so many people that go from poor to wealthy because they have fallen in love because their love interest distracts them from the normal thoughts that were holding them in the place of not allowing the well-being. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, but I got it. Um, but suppose, um, the reason, I, one of the things that led me to about the healing um, was I had this extreme pain in my shoulder blade. I went to an acupuncturist, we've now got it, in which I've had success with before, and we've gotten out of my shoulder, and now it's into my elbow. Uh, and he says it's just, you know, the energy channels, et cetera. It's interesting, and, isn't it? Yeah. In other words, I, so, so, so think about that. That's really a wonderful thing for you to acknowledge because what that says is the symptom or the disease is too strong of a word, but we're going to use it. The, the disease is not a reality because it's moving all around. Right. And I didn't go to him right away because I, you know, I thought that I could get to a wellness place vibration and it would go away. Well, you can but it or was, you could. Was, but in, the pain was just so strong that, uh, you know, I didn't know what else to well, do. Well, here's the thing that's it. So that, what I'm asking is, how, is there a way to integrate that with a, with a so-called healer or don't bother or... 
whatever works. In other words, we would not encourage you to do or to not do anything because in the same way that we were saying the path of least resistance for someone truly depressed might be to find something that they're really mad about and that would be an improvement, we, are, we would never say that any action that you're taking is inappropriate because if it makes you feel better, then it is appropriate. The reason that it doesn't work for everybody is because different people have different beliefs or expectations about different things. We want to talk about this just a little bit, though, because you're, you, you bring something up that is so valuable and so worth understanding. So here you are, you have this condition, which feels static. It, 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 if you were looking at this podium and you see this scratch on it, you might say, well, that's a reality. And so when you have a, a spot on your shoulder that is hurting, you think of it like like something that it's it's like that it's done and now somebody needs to get out the sandpaper and somebody needs to get out the varnish and mm -hmm. somebody need, but w what we want you to understand about your body is the sensation that you have in your body is just about a snapshot in time about energy moving and this acupuncturist has really helped you to understand that because he has been able to work with you and manipulate your energy and move the spot from there over to there right and that's really fascinating. That makes it not look like a reality. That makes that puts it into the context of what it really is. It's it's blockage that's moving around. So how can it be blocking? So couldn't it move from my shoulder to my elbow to my fingertip to somewhere nothing to do with me? And we say it can unless you unless you keep beating the drum of whatever it is about. Because the tendency in medicine is to say, well, what medicine is about is the spot. Right. And we say, no, the spot is only the current manifestation of the energy. So if you get focused on the energy and forget about the spot, then the spot will move to your elbow, to your fingertip, off into some place that has nothing to do with you. You see? But you, you got to put medicine in the context of energy and you've got to put energy in the context of vibration and you've got to put vibration in the context of emotion and you've got to put emotion in the context of I want to feel a little better, I want to feel a little better, I want to feel a little better. So the disempowerment that the acupuncturist does is that as he works his magic, now you've got to go where his magic is, where as you get right to the heart of what caused the spot to begin with, by not focusing on the spot, but instead focusing on the emotion that is leading to the spot, mm -hmm. now you're empowered. And so when you say, I'm depressed, but I made myself angry, and I'm delighted with my anger, and I'm angry, but I moved to frustration, and I'm delighted with my frustration, now you're in charge. Now you're moving the energy yourself, you see. Right. But what happens so often is when you are moving, and these are deeper, darker vibrations than are average within you, but when you move from frustration to expectation, frustration to expectation, frustration to expectation, frustration to expectation, sometimes you don't make a correlation between frustration to expectation and some sore spot on your shoulder. And we want you to understand that every sore spot, every stiff knee, every headache, every sense of confusion, every physical sensation, every physical sensation is about energy moving through you every single time. And that's all about your relationship between where you are and where you want to be. Someone who hasn't focused much, who doesn't really want anything much different than they have. So here they are, and here they want to be. So their range of emotion would be very hard to tell the difference. In other words, they don't get too excited about anything, they don't get too worried about anything, and you'd usually find them to be a, a pretty healthy person because there's not a big range in their energy. In other words, you wouldn't find them 
enthusiastic. You wouldn't find them high on life. You wouldn't find them bouncing off the walls with enthusiasm. We don't think you'd even find them very interesting. But, <laughs> in, but, but, but then that's not any of your business or ours, is it? And so, but, but, but in terms of the way their physical body is managing, they'd be doing all right because there would not be any strong contradiction of energy. But when you meet someone who really, really wants something, who has been talking about what they want and launching goals and thinking about it and having comparative experiences, so they've really got the energy revved up and they're focused in the opposition of something they want, now there's a big gap in their energy and, and the contradiction is very strong and that takes a toll on their physical body. So then they go to the acupuncturist or the chiropractor or someone who is manipulating and moving energy and while they can get relief, the relief is usually temporary. It's what our friend was talking about earlier. Right. The spot just moves around. That's why when you go to the physician to find that early warning sign mm -hmm. and then they <laughs> remove it through medicine or through surgery,